Hey everyone, nice to be here, nice seeing all of you. All right, so um, today I'm here to talk to you about global peer-to-peer -peer securities markets using Urbit. If you haven't heard, um, there's expectations that tokenized assets are going to be a really big market in the coming years. And what I'm here to talk to you about today is that Urbit is actually ideally positioned to be the, the place where you trade these assets, where you use these assets um, permissionlessly peer-to-peer. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my background. Um, I'm going to talk to you about how you would trade these assets or use these assets today. And then I'm going to show you how Urbit makes it a lot easier. Um, so my background is actually in the DAO space. Um, I started actually seeing this tweet on Twitter, jumped into the Discord, started participating, um, hustling really hard uh, as, a, as a DAO member. Soon after that, um, I started contributing to Metacartel Ventures, which was the first venture DAO in Web3. And it was all great, um, but there were some operational issues internally, specifically dealing with off-chain assets like safe contracts, SAFs, and equity. And when people would come and leave the DAO, um, there'd be issues where you know, they, people would be owed a certain fraction of an asset. And DAOs, venture DAOs specifically, work really great with tokens when people leave and they own their share of tokens when they leave. But when dealing with these, these assets, these legal contracts, it was really hard to manage that. And so what we ended up having was you know, spreadsheets of assets being owed to different people, which I know some people in the audience had to deal with personally. So it was, it was a challenge. Um, and so Venture Club, um, which I started working on about a year and a half ago, was really started out of that frustration of trying to figure out how we can bring those investment contracts on chain and then distributing them to people compliantly uh, to manage this, this issue we had internally. So I started working on this um, and over the past year and a half have been building it and then eventually um, we, we went live in April. Uh, we started tokenizing assets, originally safe instruments, equity instruments, other kinds of investment contracts like income sharing agreements. And now we're starting to do some real estate and some debt instruments and other types of regulated security instruments compliantly. So this was, this was really great and we were having uh, some good traction doing this. Um, but what we really quickly realized was that there wasn't a, a good place to use them. Uh, you know, you bring these assets on chain, but then, you know, wh what are you gonna do with them? And th really the, the main reason why you want to bring these assets on chain is, is to use them financially. You want to be able to trade them or you want to be able to borrow against the assets um, and you want to do that, you know, easily. Um, and today, there just aren't really many options to do that. You can bring your assets on chain, but then you're kind of stuck with them, in, in our case, uh, as an NFT. Um, and there's all sorts of reasons why you might want to use them. Um, you know, if, if you're investing today and you own a, a safe instrument or equity in an early startup and it's worth a half million dollars, good luck going to your bank and getting a loan against that. Um, there, there's just no way. You can't use that. It's just on paper, the value. Whereas if, if you had these open markets that were on chain, you, you could borrow against it peer to peer very easily like you do with your JPEGs uh, today. So there's a lot of promise in doing this. Um, and so we really need just a place to be able to, to, to do these interactions. So I'm going to show a few examples of projects in the space today that are trying to build places for people to trade these assets. This is not the shit on any project. You know, these, these are great projects. They're working really hard. But it's just kind of laughable in many ways. So the first is T0, which was launched by Overstock. They've raised $134 million. Um, they only have six assets listed after five years, so very small amount. Um, I'm Canadian. I tried to use the website. Sorry, I'm blocked. Um, there's no brokers in Canada that offer this service. So right away, you know, can't use it. The other really interesting thing with T0 
um, despite their name, T0, which is, you know, banking on this, this idea that you can transfer these assets in instant, instantly, um, they also have a notice on their website that they're only open between 9.30 and 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is, uh, you know, ironic. Um, Polymath is another project, raised $60 million in 2017. Um, they have their own chain now. They have their own token standard to bring these assets on chain. You go to try to use it, um, good luck. You're not, uh, I, I was not able to use a platform to trade asset, these security assets. Um, personally, you can book a demo though. Um, so maybe there's something, I'm, I'm not sure. Another project, Taurus raised $75 million. Um, again, not accessible as a Canadian. There's only one asset live since uh, building since 2018. So literally, you bring these financial assets on chain and then you have, <laughs> you have nowhere to trade them. And the reason why, when it comes down to this, why, why are all these projects having so much trouble giving people options to, to use these assets? Um, it's really because they, they've used this stack that was used in TradFi, and they've just copied it over to Web3 and said, this is, this is probably the way these assets are going to be traded. You have, at the bottom, you have a very highly regulated exchange that needs to be built, or an ATS. You have brokers and banks sitting on top of that that interact with that via API, and then you have the end user. Utility in, in most of these situations is, is completely siloed. It's built in-house. Um, it's not really composable with everything else being built in, in, in Web3. Liquidity is also siloed. So within each exchange and ATS, it's extremely expensive. Um, you know, upwards of a million dollars a year to operate. So you can't, if you're a developer, you can't just build an app in this space. It's completely restricted. Um, and then if, if you want to make changes to the exchange or the ATS, there's a really expensive and complicated process to make changes because there's, you know, you're dealing with banks and APIs and it's very sensitive. So it's totally not at all what we would expect in the DeFi space. Can, can you imagine if like Uniswap took this approach? or you know, any other DeFi protocol. I mean, we would have never had any of the innovation over the past few years in, in, in crypto. So it, it's really a, a totally different approach. And for most of the players that are presented, they just took this very slow stack and, then, and now they're just building it on the blockchain, which is in many ways the worst of both worlds. So, it really makes you wonder, you know, why, why are we using blockchain for this? What's the purpose of all this, right? Um, if, if, if we're just going to copy the exact same models as, as we're doing in traditional finance. But um, what I'm here to present today is that there, there's a way, there's an alternative. Um, and that alternative relies on the fact that peer-to-peer -peer transactions of securities are, are legal and they're compliant. I can go to someone and I can take my asset and I can sell it to them. What's regulated is the exchange, the interface where these interactions happen. So, I mean, this is kind of where Urbit falls into the, the picture, right? Um, with Urbit, we can actually build peer-to-peer -peer applications for you to transact in these assets and then use the blockchain as the, the settlement layer. And in this case, you, you, you don't have to deal with it being a regulated exchange. You don't have to be a broker. You don't need an ATS license. And you, you can tap into DeFi. These assets can be very useful um, right out of the box. And what that means is that Urbit is really uniquely positioned to capitalize on this opportunity today. There's minimal regulatory attack surface. Um, we can innovate much more quickly. Um, deploy products, you know, as a developer, you can spin up a new instance and, and people can use it. And it can be integrated with DeFi. Um, so it's really amazing. So today, um, I, we're announcing uh, the launch of our new proof of concept, which, funny enough, has a typo in the, 
<laughs> main title here. Orbit Swap uh, is what uh, we're, we've been working on. And uh, we got a grant from the foundation to uh, um, release this. It's live uh, on Orbit today. It's 100% uh, open source. At the end of the day, it's an NFT marketplace um, that, that allows trading of NFTs, um, including our, our tokenized securities. So uh, we have a fee that goes to a community treasury, and we're looking uh, you know, to work with any other projects that want to help build it. And you know, the idea is to create a, a, really, a whole ecosystem of applications around this. And um, to start, um, we're, we just started uh, with uh, Urbit IDs uh, as the first proof of concept to show trading of assets. But in the next month, we're going to have um, our tokenized securities uh, being live uh, on the application. And then shortly after, um, we're going to allow borrowing and lending against these assets within the app, which is probably going to be years before the regulated exchanges offer you know, borrowing and lending for, for these security assets, just because of how, how complicated it is. So you know, we're, we're, we're really taking leaps and bounds compared to the alternatives here. So this is a, a demo, a pre-recorded demo of, of the application, uh, showing some of the functionality here. So this is the app here. Uh, you can connect your wallet associated with your Urbit ID. Um, what's really unique about this compared to a lot of NFT marketplaces today is you can actually uh, message the owners of the assets directly. So if you find an Urbit ID, for example, that you're interested in, you can send them a message and tell them, hey, you know, can you please sell me this thing? And um, hopefully they list it for sale. You can place a bid, or, or you know, this is a, the seller posting a, a, an ask for a price. And then um, you can essentially buy and sell these assets peer to peer, which is uh, pretty amazing. So this is just going through the motions, uh, listing the asset for sale. Under the hood here, we're using uh, the Rarible protocol, which I've worked with in the past. We had uh, a relationship with them. And, um, so their protocol manages the trading, and then the UI is essentially just uh, you know, a, an Urbit app here. So the asset being listed. This is just going through the flow of, um, of, of buying the asset. Now you can see the, the buyer accepting the trade, uh, paying in Ethereum, and, and getting the asset uh, transferred to them. Got to love those Ethereum transactions. So, you know, there's a lot of potential for this to be, um, a lot of potential for Urbit to really become known for the place where you use these, these assets uh, before any other applications in, in Web3. Um, we're certainly very bullish on this opportunity. And you know, we, we're, we're definitely looking to work with any developers who want to help build this. And um, anyone who has financial assets that they want to move on chain, um, you know, we're more than happy to help and uh, provide utility for those assets. Any projects that are raising in Urbit that want to raise uh, via NFT sales, we can enable that too. We recently worked with uh, Vaporware um, in the ecosystem to um, syndicate uh, around for, for their deal. So, you know, we should all be thinking about how we can leverage our assets in the Urbit ecosystem um, and, and really just promote this as a, a really great use case of, of the ecosystem and showing how that peer-to-peer um, -peer applications can be extremely useful. So that's all for my talk. Um, you can con contact me on Telegram or Twitter or um, our new Twitter account for UrbitSwap. Um, you can contact us there. And um, yeah, looking forward to, to talking to you all and um, answering any questions if you have any. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Um, so yeah, you said that uh, P2P transactions of assets is legal. 
like of, of what assets? Like of a house, of stock, yeah? Like, like so, so I can just go into a cap table of a company, like some founder can or some investor can sell me stock legally, that's, that, uh, that's not legal. So the, the problem with, with this on-chain assets is precisely that they have to talk to this Middlemen, I mean, they suck, right? But it's the government, taxation, settlement, and so on. So I, I, I mean, I also think that the idea of P2P exchange of all these on-chain assets is, is fantastic. But that is precisely the problem that all of these on-chain or real-world asset companies are facing. And I like that orbit. It's definitely a place where this can happen. But for this, you would have to involve all of these regulators or entities that are actually in charge of um, approving that exchange. Yeah, so that is the Venture Club is the protocol that we've built, which has two roles. I didn't really go into that in, in the talk, but our, our main two roles is the issuance of the tokenized security and then the compliance, uh, the compliant movement of those assets. So how they can, the rules around how they can be transferred. So, you know, the issuance, for example, there's rules around accreditation um, in the U.S. and internationally. And then on the transfers, there's also rules around, you know, if, if you're a founder of a company or you're international and there's sometimes holding periods. So our protocol that we've built is really around, uh, centered around those two areas. But then, you know, we're assuming here that the, the, on the urban side and the application to allow trading would be for compliant um, Trading, so the rules are baked in the smart contract, and then and then you use the app to interact with them. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah. So, kind of following up on that question, if you have, uh, let's say, you mentioned like tokenized securities, the NFTs that you're representing are these these are not bearer assets, right? The NFT itself is not the actual asset, it, correct? Um. It represents, uh, well, it goes into a little bit the legal structure of, of the underlying um, process. But for every asset that's brought on chain, there's a, there's a legal wrapper. Um, and the NFT represents ownership in that legal wrapper, um, direct ownership. Great. So then the, the next question there is the, the kind of interface that you, you showed us here, I conceptually think of it as something like, almost like Craigslist, right? Where I have some asset that has this legal wrapper, which is the compliance issue that you mentioned. So when I list this, this thing, it might have a nice JPEG picture on it, but what's actually happening if you know, this app progresses is something like um, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction, which then needs to actually have final settlement uh, if it's not a pure bearer asset in some other place and in some other way, and, that, and that's what's actually happening here. It's, but, but Urbit is being used to uh, facilitate uh, the, the, the initial part of the transaction, but it can be finalized in a compliant way. Is, is that generally correct? That is the process, yeah. All right, last one is if I have something like um, a, you know, company stock or something like that, is it possible to cut that up so I, can, I don't have to sell all of it, yeah. something like that? Um, not yet, but that's in our roadmap is, is to enable you to to fractionalize and take one, one asset and split it up into many um, within the regulatory bounds, which will be roughly 100 uh, NFTs. Is the demo that you showed available to be installed right now? Yeah, if you go to um, our Twitter account, um, there should be a link there to install it. If you have any issues, just uh, DM us on Twitter and um, yeah, we'll, we'll help you out. Uh, is there an Urbit ID? I, I'm not on Twitter. Um, yeah, just find me after. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, everyone.